Welcome to the third video in the pseudocode series. We're going to look at iteration. Iteration, or as we more commonly know it, a loop, can come in various different forms. Now, the exam board defines iteration as running the same block of code repeatedly in the same sequence. We've got two different types we can look at, count controlled or condition controlled. Let's have a look at count controlled first. Count controlled loops are typically for loops. So in the example for i equals 0 to 7, it'll run that block of code eight times. The difference between this and Python, for example, is that the 0 to 7 is inclusive. That means it includes that final value. If we add, for example, a 4i in range 5, in Python, that would run from 0 to 4 and not include that 5. But this is very, very, very slightly different. You have to be aware of that for the exam. The other slight difference is that we've got a next i. The next i simply says, this is when we will start our loop again and go back to the beginning of our block. In terms of condition control loops, we have a while, end while, and a do until. A while is very similar to what we've used to already. So we've got while answer is not equal to computer, answer equals input what is the password, and then an end while. Please note that the end while is all one word. I've just separated it out again so that Visual Studio Code highlights the two key terms, but you can use either. The do until runs a block of code until a condition is met. So we have the keyword do at the start, then our block of code, and then until and whatever the condition is. Now, they're both very, very similar, but there's a slight difference between the two methods. A while could run its code zero times, it could run it once, or it could run it multiple up to infinity. A do until always runs that block of code at least once, but again, we could have many or up until infinity. So you have to think about what's the best for the exam question that you're faced with. Do you need to run it zero, one, or many times? And then you'd pick the right type of condition control loop to match whatever you're trying to solve. Well, that was short and sweet. You can now do part B of the exercises or go on to look at subroutines.